But it's just outside. You never even noticed that. So there's a church back there. Okay. It's like a Catholic church. And I, I never saw this apartment. I got it when I was in London for my show and I was on the top of a double decker bus and I'd been looking for three months and I got the photos and I was like, I, this is it, you know, I, I just knew this intuitively. But when I walked in, the first thing I noticed was the church back there. And you know, a lot of my work has to do with spirituality and not necessarily Christianity, but there's definitely Christianity that I'm yeah. observing and, you know, from my experience and intrigued by. <clears throat> and I saw the cross up there and then I saw the little shrine and I'm like, what the heck is this, you know? And, uh, and I knew that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know? I, you know, my paintings are a representation of what's happening in my life and there's too many things happening in life, you know? Like, why does art have to be some extremely concise, simple representation of an idea? Like, I don't think that that's not accurate for, for me. The first time going to Lakewood, which is Joel Osteen's church in Houston, it was like the first time I went to the Cy Twombly Museum at the Manila Collection. It was a full-blown spiritual experience. And, you know, I'd gone into it with all these preconceptions. And, you know, I see all these memes, which, you know, some were pretty funny. And, you know, I had a resentment against having, being forced to go to church and stuff. But, you know, when I walked in there and I just felt that energy, you know. And, and that's what I seek when I go to exhibitions, is I want to be moved. I want to feel that energy. And I hope that my work imbues that energy and it gives somebody an experience like what I had um, you know with with all these early art experiences <clears throat> like the Twombly one in particular and um, you know that performance you know feeling the bass and like just being in that environment where there's so much energy and something's happening and like I don't know it was a beautiful experience yet uh, you know in, in breaking this architecture letting the fabric hang off you know, the painting coming out three-dimensionally, like I feel like painting should be more than just an image. Like there's a responsibility for, for painting and art to be experienced in person at a higher level or a more intimate way or a more true way than, than, than seeing something just on Instagram and floating by an image and you get that work, you know? Super colorful figuration, you know? That's right. where I'm right. at with that. Yes, and you know, there are examples of that you know, not being true, but, um, you know, for me, like, I think about in these works, like, how do I challenge that rectangle? I think about that a lot, right? Um, that isn't my main focus, but, but it's challenging. It really is hard to break away from it because obviously I'm still constricted to it. You know, this is on a stretcher bar. Right. This is on a, you know, there's canvas on here. There's paint on here. It's on a wall. Um, and, you know, my practice is a lot about that push-pull between those two. Now these have come off the wall, they will come off the wall, there'll be no canvas, no paint, just fabric, just an installation, and then I resort back to it, you know, there's something powerful about that, about that rectangle. Uh, the difference is, like, the responsibility of a painting is so different than that of a garment, right? You know, this painting might be unstretched, might go into storage, might stay on someone's wall for forever, you know, that is a responsibility. For a garment, it's like this thing has to be able to be worn, it has to be able to be washed and like taken care of, and there's a hole in it, like you're not gonna probably get a hole in this painting, right? Um, so that, 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 is, that brings up an interesting thing, but you know, for me, like I think about the stretcher bar as body. That is like so integral to my practice, you know, these aluminum stretchers that I've been working on for years. I can have a much more intimate experience with them because they don't bring in the energy that an, a, another human did. And then going back to the architecture question, being limited to, confined to a box and the rectangle, like my interest, you know, I started in fashion, was always in the two-dimensional image of fashion. I grew up looking at hype beast, you know, their street style images lookbooks. I remember the first Vetmont lookbook and how much that impacted my life um, to the core and shook me and I tried to recreate that in my own way for years and just could never get to it. And you know so with painting why I'm so attracted to painting is number one I'm able to use my hands and do it when I kind of missed out from fashion in many ways. And number two is like the focus is on the image you know like Yes, it's the presence of the object itself, its inherent sculptural nature, the energy, but um, 
I am an image maker, you know. I, I am so obsessed with visual language that painting, and specifically painting art history, it, it, you know, it's just so appealing to me and the never-ending rabbit hole of, you know, how I came to this with everyone who came before me is just fascinating. <clears throat> you know, so oftentimes I think about, like, how to make a painting with no paint, with no canvas, with no brush. Um, a lot of the artists who I look up to, like, you know, have used fabric in their work. But for me, you know, I, I didn't have as much personal relation to say canvas, a brush and paint. I had the relation to charmeuse, satin, organza, um, these things, right? And so like, I've been exploring that personal relationship and that experience. Um, and then also like a printing process that's unique to fashion, dye sublimation. For me, it's Warhol, Wool, Guyton, Preston. And, and that's incorporated into these works as well. And, you know, I come from collage, you know, that is my first love in painting, I'd say. Um, and so that is all incorporated in here. But as far as like the physical manipulation of these works go, these are actually burned. Um, so I'll paint the fabric, go upstate and um, basically do this performance work where I'm in this field and I burn the works. And we have this particular way of burning them. and. You know, these are the first burned works. You know, it smells like gasoline in my studio when I bring them back. It's terrible, but there's something that I'm so attracted to that I just can't stop doing it. I'm going up this weekend again to burn a bunch of other fabrics and really let them burn this time. Um, yeah, I use all sorts of tools and, and ways of mark making that are not limited to the brush and paint. Um, and, you know, that's just my visual language that I've developed over the years of finding my voice and, and I love that and you know the first time you came to my studio <clears throat> we talked about this you commented on the brutalist nature of the work and I was uh, quite enamored <laughs> uh, you know how to touch my heart um, and yeah they, they are brutalist you know I don't necessarily consciously think about that but from my early fashion influences in particular like that you know quite brutalist you know I think about emotional <laughs> Brutalism in a way, you know, and you can really sense it in these red works. Um, you know, going back to your question, you know, the fragility of these works versus the, mm, you know, eternal nature of painting. You know, there's that, that question. Um, I, I think about that quite a bit, mainly when I'm showing the work and people literally want to unzip the painting, you know, in front of me or you know, having to get into physical altercations with drunk pub yeah. goers who happen to stumble upon the exhibition trying to unzip and zip the painting. And, um, you know, I'm honored that people feel uh, such a bodily connection to the work because that is one of the intents, right? Um, you know, I don't go up to, you know, a lot of paintings in the MoMA, you know, older paintings that are oftentimes so flat I want to touch them, you know, unless I'm protesting something and want to super glue my hand on it. Um, you know, you don't see people really have that reaction as much. You know, they have the reaction like, oh, my kid could do that, you know, or I could do that. <clears throat> um, but this, this new relationship to the body, I really, I really find interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, perspective in painting history is, you know, one of the most discussed topics, I'd say, in your you know, Art History 101 class, right? Um, in a way, I'm more interested in like, this inward perspective, right? To me, that's kind of what my whole life is about. Um, you know, I think about the zippers as portals, so you're spot on about that. You know, they, they add something to the See Through Me painting, the transparent black and white works that uh, makes it more than just a painting that makes it, it addresses the inherent sculptural nature because you can see the wall, you can see the stretcher bar, there's a sensuality between it, you know, the collectors can, what are, what someone quoted, you know, coined uh, styling the painting so they can zip it or unzip it, I have preferences depending on the work. Um, and then having my initials on some of them is like my, you know, Josh Smith, Josh Smith painting, you know, PD, the history of artists signing <laughs> a painting 
doing it in my own way, you know, my relationship back to fashion. But it's more than that, it's aesthetically pleasing. My love for Lawrence Wiener's work and using, you know, very small poems and having the hope is alive, triple zipper paintings. And I see myself making more of those. Um, you know, I think about Duchamp's, one of his most famous works that's now in Philadelphia where you, you know, look through the peephole and, you know, you see this whole world behind you, you know. Um, to me, I think about these paintings, you know, paintings are but the beginning for Preston Douglas. Um, and they're a great beginning. But, you know, I start thinking about, you know, what's behind the zipper? Like, how do we really enter this world, right? And so that's where the installations came out of. You know, I make these fabric installation works where the viewer is invited to come sit, experience. I make sound works that play for the installations. And, you know, as I see <coughs> my practice grow and the opportunities to exhibit, you know, in larger spaces, budgets, et cetera, like these installations will really become uh, uh, what I envision them to be. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited for that day and, and, it, and it's coming soon. You know, materiality in my practice is of course <laughs> very important. Um, I'm a very sensitive person. Um, very sensitive person. I think to be a great artist, you have to be sensitive, you know, it's, to me, art making is a cathartic process. You know, I make art because I have to, and also because I love to, and also because I get to, um, you know, there's actually way less pain and suffering in these red works than there are in those purple works, you know, from the purple series, like so much more pain and suffering in those purple paintings. And, you know, yet they read quite beautiful upon further inspection. It's like, Oh, like there's some pain here. Yeah. I had like a realization literally yesterday as I was journaling that the word pain is literally in paintings. I mean, like it was the time I, I realized that Flo Rida's name was Florida. <laughs> exactly. I think that blew everybody's mind. When <laughs> okay. I'm glad I'm not alone. Cause no. I've told some people and they're like, dude, you're, f <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I learned that like a little bit after high school. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, I didn't, I never considered that there's literally pain in paintings. Yeah. You know, that is, my main motivator in making most paintings, you know, most art, um, an attachment to pain and identification with pain. You know, there's my, you know, a perspective shift that I've been working on for years that, you know, might be one of my lifelong journeys, which I get to express through art.